Hi, everyone, and welcome to Cross Media Marketing Masterclass, the stress-free way to boost ROI. I'm your host, Jen Karsner, and we will get started in just a few minutes. Hi everyone, and thank you for joining today's webinar, Cross Media Marketing Masterclass, the stress-free way to boost ROI. We are going to get started in just a couple minutes. Hi everyone, and welcome to Cross Media Marketing Masterclass, the stress-free way to boost ROI. I'm your host today, Jen Karsner, and I wanna welcome you all to our webinar. Today's speakers are going to be Katia Hausman, Vice President of Pro Product Marketing for Local IQ, Stephanie Isimberto, Director of Product Management, and Chris Barton, Chief Product Officer. First, let me go ahead and welcome Chris Barton, our Chief Product Officer, to today's webinar. Well, thank you very much, Jen. Uh, we're excited to be here with you all today and to be part of this masterclass. We hope it will be useful, insightful, and that you'll be able to take away some things that will uh, help you improve and, and learn a little bit more about cross-media marketing. Um, first, uh, as, as we just said, um, you're going to hear from some of my colleagues uh, who today, so Katya and Stephanie uh, and I will all be speaking uh, and sharing different insights with you. Um, these are people, Katya and Stephanie being people who have pioneered some of the features, the capabilities, and the technologies that uh, we'll be discussing today. And so look forward to that. Um, if we jump ahead, uh, see slides are not advancing for me, Jen. Um, we're on slide three. Um, we talk a little bit about how we're different uh, as a company. Maybe I'll just pause for a quick second. Um, the slides are not advancing. The slides are not advancing for you? They are not. Yeah, no, uh, they, they aren't right now. Um, we can keep on this, but if I get too far ahead, we might lose you with some of the good visuals we have. Okay, here we go. There we go. All right. So, okay. yep. There, there there, there. Perfect. So, um, if, uh, just kind of uh, going through. So, local IQ. Um, who are we, and, and what are we doing here, and, and why hear from us? First of all, we just want to tell you how we're different. And as you can see in the name, local and IQ, um, we believe those are the key aspects. Being local, we're a leading digital marketing expert with deep roots in over 260 communities across the country. It's our passion to help businesses like yours and communities grow. And we've taken the best from several organizations that have merged together over the years, uh, being Reach Local, WordStream, the USA Today Network, and of course, Local IQ. Uh, and we've merged those together to build the, the best of the best and have great insights. And what's incredible about Local IQ, 
uh, when you look at our reach and uh, the coverage that we have is uh, we have uniquely engaged local audiences uh, with industry leading technology, deep digital marketing expertise and insights from 300,000 uh, plus customers across the US. We also have award-winning proprietary technology. And we're gonna talk a little bit about some of that today and some of the insights that we get and using and building that technology and share those with you. Uh, we built a best in class digital platform that enables data driven campaigns that work for you. And we have premier partnerships with all the key industry platforms uh, to further drive results. And we're very, very excited to be with you here today. Um, so let's look at our agenda and what we'll be covering. Um, as you can see, um, we've got a, a few things that we'll be hitting on. Uh, the first being, um, what is uh, cross-media marketing? Um, the second is, uh, we'll talk a little bit about cross-channel pain points and some of the different uh, elements there and, and have a little discussion. And then uh, lastly, we'll hit on um, what we suggest and some of the solutions that we have uh, to ultimately solve some of these problems today. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and jump right in. Um, if we first start describing what is cross-media marketing, um, there's some data points you'll see uh, come up here in just a second. Now, as a customer, if you're a customer, we're all customers at the end of the day, um, you expect to have the same experience with a business no matter where you're engaging with them. So, for example, you might write an email or fill out a form online where you give a long, detailed explanation of some of the, the issues you're facing or some of your questions, and you expect when they would then talk to that business again, not to have to repeat all of that information as if you're talking to them for the first time. You expect them to know that already. Uh, we've all had that experience. And when those experiences feel disjointed and disconnected, it's very frustrating as a consumer. Well, the same is true for your business. Um, you, uh, your customers want consistent experiences across all the channels that you interact with them. And uh, because of that, it's really, really difficult and important to think about how all that connects. Um, it's difficult because you may not have a large enterprise team to, to, to be able to connect all these pieces across the technology, across the, the tools that you use, and across your workforce, whether it be a couple people or many people. And so you need solutions that will bring all that together. And that's exactly what cross-channel marketing, uh, where it comes in. It's the idea of helping all these different channels work together uh, seamlessly and to be focused on customer experiences. So today we're gonna to be talking about what Crest Channel Marketing is, some of its benefits, we'll give you some examples, and we'll also talk to you about how you create your own cross-channel marketing strategy. Uh, so again, let's define, uh, in the next slide here, let's define uh, what we mean by cross-media. So your marketing mix today is likely composed of both paid and organic marketing activities. And uh, companies like you need to invest across these different channels because they're important and not everybody interacts with you the same way. And as you do that, you need to be tracking what's working, what's not, what's yielding a better return on your investment, and also being mindful of that customer experience that you're delivering, because that represents you ultimately. So on this chart here, you can see on the, the right-hand side of it, multi-channel marketing. And this refers to marketing across multiple channels, um, and, and spending your efforts and time across these different places. The difference between multi-channel marketing and cross-channel marketing really is the difference of, you can see the, the user here, your customer being, whether it's just sort of one data point interacting with these channels on the right, or in the, in the left-hand side we see in cross-channel marketing, they're at the center of all the activity that's going on. And all of the activities are working together, ultimately being focused on that customer experience. And that is what cross-channel marketing is, is at the end of the day. Um, and, and we believe it is important that you think about that holistically and that you have tools that not only help connect these experiences together, but also that the, uh, the technologies work behind the scenes um, and are working in concert together to make sure all these things are feeding off each other. If an opportunity is seen in one area, the technology is smart enough to know where to go get that opportunity. And so that's a little bit of what we're gonna talk about you, uh, with you today is this combination of technology, strategy, and having a great team that can help you effectuate and put in place this plan. 
Um, and that is really at the end of the day what cross-channel marketing is. And so uh, with this now, we're gonna turn over a little bit. Jen's gonna kind of moderate through a conversation with Stephanie and Katya, and uh, we'll learn a little bit more about the space. So over to you, Jen. Thanks, Chris. That was beautifully said. Um, I'm going to welcome Stephanie on. Hey, Stephanie, how are you today? Hey, Jen, great, thank you. Good. Well, I just really, you know, I know you that you're the expert here in cross media marketing. You work on it all the time. We put a lot of effort into this um, this webinar today. So, can you tell me a little bit about why does this need cross media marketing? Sure. Um, it's really important to think about promoting your product or service with the help of diverse media channels. And also, you really wanna make sure that you deploy various tactics because you wanna reach people at different stages of the customer buying journey. So taking this approach is really gonna benefit your business by helping you broaden your reach, um, helping you reduce your marketing costs, and also it allows you to gather data and learn what's working along the way. So that way you can continually work to optimize your strategy and your budget over time to get the best results. Awesome, thank you, that's so brilliant. And I know that you know we need multiple marketing tactics to reach customers on the complex journey, right? Can you talk to me a little bit about the customer journey and what that looks like when cross-media marketing is involved? Yeah, sure. So, you know, we already know the customer journey is super complicated already. It's typically not just a straight line from click on add to purchase. Um, people move through different phases like research, then into consideration, maybe back to research and then back to considering. I mean, it can look all different kinds of ways, right? They don't convert by just, you know, viewing only one ad. The actual um, average user, I think, has about seven to 10 interactions before somebody converts to become a customer. So uh, with that in mind, uh, this is where it's important to use a cross-channel approach. Um, it's a powerful way of designing your marketing strategy to create customer journeys across various channels. Um, it helps build brand awareness by placing your brand in front of the consumer as much as possible until it's, they don't even realize it. It's just, you know, in their subconscious. And then also it can help um, move those prospects seamlessly through the sales funnel across multiple channels. Awesome. Thank you. And so now that we've kind of talked a little bit about that customer journey and meeting people where they are, we know that there's seven to 10 touch points. You know, I know we talked a lot about best practices when we were working through this webinar and creating content. What are some best practices for setting up your initial campaign when, when first starting your, your cross media marketing plan? Okay, I have several, I think. So the first thing you wanna do <laughs> is start with um, creating your buyer personas. And what that involves is really just understanding your customers um, before you create your marketing strategy you know, to attract them. Um, things like what are their likely preferences, their behaviors, their buying habits, their methods of communication or modes of communication. And then um, you really want to imitate that, that buyer's journey through your own website. Um, this way you can look to make sure, do you have the right conversion points that are optimized to capture the leads, such as you know, prominent calls to action, maybe like a click to call button or even like a live chat feature. So you just really want to think through your customer journey and how they would behave and then make sure that you know you have you're set up for success to capture them okay uh, uh -huh. um so the next thing to keep in mind is that you ne don't necessarily always want to use every channel that's available to you for advertising you want to choose different mediums that complement each other and that drive conversion towards your primary business goal of your campaign so maybe you're the goal of the campaign is to get more leads, or maybe it's just simply to drive more brand awareness. So um, I'll give an example. Like if you were thinking about um, driving leads, you might only be looking at a combination of search and social channels, or maybe you even want to add in listings, right? Um, if it was something like, hey, I'm just trying to drive brand awareness, you might want to look at something like social ads or YouTube. So um, just you know, want to keep those strategies in mind. Um, the other thing I would say is you really want to make sure that you unify your data. 
And this would be things like setting up your lead source tracking so you know what channels your leads are coming from. Um, like, is it coming from ads? Is it organic? You know, et cetera. Um, also, you want to use um, phone call tracking and recording of your phone calls, right? So that way you can really make sure that, you know, we know the phone's ringing, you're getting leads, but are they the right leads? Um, or are you getting a bunch of junk like robo calls or the wrong type of customer calls? And then also super important, um, make sure that you're tracking the different events on your site where you capture people, right? Like, so you can understand what's producing your best leads um, are, you know, live chats or people maybe scheduling an appointment on your website or filling out a form and, and also using all that to understand what channels delivered those leads to. Um, and then lastly, um, you know, making sure you want to um, deploy a cookies, you know, just so you can do retargeting and look, they'll look like audiences off that, that data. Um, and then I think the final thing I would say is um, make sure that you're getting the most mileage you can out of your organic and paid social media. So again, that sort of ties back to um, using that Facebook pixel to retarget customers who visit your website or, you know, users that visit your website. Um, it helps you to be able to penetrate certain segments of audiences more deeply because of the data that is learned from that. Um, you know, also you can uh, use data from your other campaigns to build lookalike audiences, like your search leads can be used to power lookalike audiences on social advertising. Um, also, you know, you can take data from lead form fills and use that to power it. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, and then also just don't waste money on not performing, non-performing type campaigns. So really be evaluating what's driving um, the best lead conversion for you and the lowest cost per lead. Okay, that was a ton of really, really great information. Um, I think I think that everything that you pointed out was really great, you know, talking about the buyer personas and the journey, your channels to fit your goals, unifying that data, and of course, the utilization of paid and organic social media. And now that we know kind of what to do to set up our campaigns properly, what would you suggest people do on this on the next steps on the tail end of everything. Okay, so here I would say testing is everything. Um, you want to make sure that you know everything is all in sync and there's not going to be any issues with your buyers when they're on that conversion journey or that customer journey, right? So look at things like are my ads driving to the correct landing pages? Um, are my call tracking numbers working and routing to the right you know phone number? Um, you know, just making sure even that your leads get routed to the right person, that they don't end up in a voicemail box, for example. So um, on that note, the other thing is customer support, right? You can have a phenomenal campaign, but if you don't have the right people in place to support those leads that are coming in, then you're, you know, uh, essentially wasting your advertising dollars there. So. Um, just make sure that you have the right people in the right place uh, to be responsive to those leads in a very short time frame. Uh, because we know, you know, that many times leads cool off very quickly. If right. somebody has to wait a whole day to hear back from you, they might already have moved on to looking for another provider. Um, so, you know, just having that in place. And then um, lastly, I would say, you know, analysis, right? Analyze your insights. Um, is it can dr dramatically change your marketing game, right? So you want to interweave all these insights and make sure that you are creating this seamless experience and that you understand what's working. So ask yourself questions like, you know, is your social media strategy um, working, you know, holistically to support your overall DMS strategy or digital marketing strategy? Um, does your campaign reflect the same brand and message all across, you know, so that it's holistic, like what Chris kind of touched on earlier. And then also, um, I would say, are you targeting the right audiences on each channel? So you really want to do a deep analysis to make sure that you're reaching the right audiences. And last, I would suggest, um, you know, looking at the different platforms where you're, um, you know, running your campaigns and making sure that you understand like what's working better and then continue to optimize your budget towards what is driving the best result. 
All right, that is a ton of information. So we wanna make sure that we're testing a ton. We're definitely utilizing customer support and analyzing those insights. So, you know, it sounds like the world of cross-channel marketing or cross-media marketing can feel really complicated. And on the screen, you guys can see a couple of questions that you're probably asking yourself. You know, how should I sp spread my marketing budget across, you know, key lead sources? Why, when, and how often should I shift that budget from channel to channel? And how do I know what's working and when it's working and and Stephanie kind of went through a lot of those things and a lot of those points that we can utilize in order to determine the answers to this question. And there's a ton more questions I'm sure that you guys have. And you know, while the world of cross-channel marketing can feel really complicated, it doesn't have to be, right? Um, and that's kind of where we come in. So, you know, first and foremost, thank you so much, Stephanie, for helping me out with this section. Next, I'd like to welcome on Katya who's gonna be talking a little bit today about cross-media marketing and the pain points that that are associated with it. So hi, Katya, how are you? Hi, thanks, Jen. Uh, happy to be on that call and share, hopefully, some very useful information and insights that we're seeing. Yes, I'm super excited. Um, I know we've worked a ton, you know, throughout this whole process and now that we kind of know how a cross-media campaign is ran and what's involved you know let's take a look at some of the pain points that make using this tactic a bit more difficult than most right so we talked a lot about pain points when we were creating our content today um let me ask you why is choosing the right channels so difficult yet also so important Yes, I mean, it's a great question, right? You can see that the advertising world has gotten a lot more complicated. If years ago, all you needed to do is to worry about, you know, how to be found on the search engines. Now you want to participate in every single conversation, stay on top of mind during different parts of the customer journey. So you want to employ so many different tactics. So what's right? Uh, how do you achieve the best results and that's the right for your business, for your location, for your budget? And that's the art because it's very individual. I think the bottom line is that your cross-channel marketing won't be successful if you're running campaigns on a channel where a few of your customers are spending time or looking for the business. And so how do you know? Um, again, it's not a right answer that works for everyone that's standard. It's very, <laughs> the answer depends. Uh, but this is how you at least can start thinking about it. First and foremost, think about your goals and understand your customer behavior. I'm, again, echoing a lot of things that Stephanie and Chris already have been talking about, but we just see it over and over again. Um, let's say you are looking for to drive leads to your business, very common for small businesses. And traditionally, you may just put 100% of your budget on search, which is probably still true if you're locksmith, I get locked out, I search quickly, I find provider, I call and boom, you get a lead. But if you, let's say an attorney and that decision, hire, the cycle of the hiring, that decision making is, very different and then you will look at a whole other slew of tactics to deploy um tracking and attribution i mean stephanie talked about it for a while but this is the key too right you may think you're doing the right thing and uh, you make your best decisions on the tactic mix and budget distribution but you have to make sure that you're tracking and attributing all those leads and that is cut through all the channels so that then you can give a credit to the right channel, right? Like, for example, someone came from search, a paid search, then they've been retargeted through social, then finally converted into a client by making an organic non-paid click. So that we call here. You want to make sure you, you give credit, credits to every channel because they may have not converted into a customer in the end of the day shouldn't you, if you did not have all those taxes tactics in place and then of course the world is getting not only the, the the channels the number of channels and the tactics is complicated the publishers themselves they're getting a lot more sophisticated we're seeing a lot more automation we're seeing uh the use of the first party data we've seen also that um those channels and publishers those googles facebook's and microsoft's of the world they're becoming a lot more advanced in the sense that uh they'll do a lot of interesting and useful things for you 
if you give them the right data. So we're back to that uh, picking the right channel, then tracking and attribution, and feeding the uh, you know the, the data back. So um, and then analysis, right? You just don't want to leave it alone. You have to keep watching it and making sure that uh, it works for your needs. Okay, great. So, so it's a handful. <laughs> <laughs> it is a handful, right? It's a ton of information and there's so many channels to consider when considering your cautional marketing. So it's it's kind of like, you know, what's the winning combination that will help your business really drive drive performance that m meets your KPI and your goals? Right. It's all about the goal, right? Just start with a goal and no two marketing mixes will be the same. Um, so traditionally think about search is at the bottom of the funnel. If you're really targeting someone who, okay, I'm ready, I'm ready to buy, ready to uh, um, hire somebody for the services, that's where the money should go. Display is more of a discovery, which is reaching those who are ready to discover, to engage with your brand. Social is somewhat in the middle. It's kind of that circle that you keep, you want to keep feeding, to keep feeding the conversations so that you're staying on top of the mind from retargeting perspective and also participating in the conversations that uh, people may be having uh, as they're making those decisions uh, before they're quite ready to buy. And just even the same businesses, or, um, similar businesses in the same uh, space may see very different results. For example, we had two clients who sell real estate. One was getting most of the leads from Facebook, the other one from search. And that actually, once you start unpacking it, you'll see why. Once you understand your client, uh, one of them actually was more focusing on, sorry, not the client, but the, you know, the, the buyer, the uh, customers who they be engaging with. One who was getting most leads from Facebook uh, was having a property that they were featuring and selling the new property was uh, a great way to reach those potential buyers on Facebook. And uh, uh, they, they, it blew up in the sense that in a good way that they had so many appointments. But then on the other hand, the other real estate uh, agency was just more general about uh, driving leads to the uh, real estate agent, brokers just will help you. And this is the one more uh, search based and we saw a lot more um, leads coming for them for Facebook. And so I think the point here is that you may actually think a lot, create the strategy, do all the right things, but then once you start running campaigns, Sometimes this is where the job just begins because you may start seeing what you did not anticipate and you have to work with, uh, you know, shift money quickly and basically maximize the dollars where they convert the best, even though you thought that uh, uh, you have a lot of insights to do it right, which again, is just the starting point. So uh, that part too, I think the takeaway here, winning combination is key, but optimizing to the through through that journey and seeing and tracking and testing and analyzing that will also it's it's an uh, essential part of running a cross channel campaign okay perfect and i know like this tactic can seem quite complex if you aren't really familiar with reporting and reading data and understanding how marketing is working across channels um you know you really have to stay on top of reporting the analysis of your KPI to determine that performance, you know, the time needed to perform that analysis, as well as the shifting efforts based off of your data, right? So why is it so important to be able to understand your reporting when it comes to cross-media marketing? Well, again, it just leads to that, uh, uh, what I talked er uh, about earlier, where you may know and think up front you know where uh, you're going to get best results, but it's only by analyzing the report you will see if it actually is true and whether or not you need to shift money. You just It's its one of those things that you can have sat and forget. Uh, we've all seen with pandemics, right? We have another example I want to say, is this uh, a company who uh, have several gym locations. Search was a super important 
channel for them to drive leads in performing excellent until the pandemic hits and the location started closing. And then all of a sudden it's the Facebook that went, which we went upside down. Facebook became the driving um, leads, the, the main source of drive leads. And then again, as the location started opening up, it, um, turned into search again. So things are very fluid, and especially the time we're in. And you just don't want to pigeonhole yourself in a channel that is not delivering best possible results for your advertising dollar. And, uh, you know, things changing, let's say, pandemic aside, there are seasons and uh, things of that nature. So you, you do want to keep tracking and uh, uh, looking at the results by channel. Also, the on this slide we have, I mean, it's a whole probably other webinar on the first party data, second party data, third party data. One thing I want to say is that um, first party data is becoming ever so, so ever more important than it used to be. So one thing, even though uh, we see a lot of publishers today. Um, using first party data from bigger clients it's just whatever you feed back into the publishers you get better results but um i can imagine that the time will come even for small clients for smaller business clients uh it will be that audience targeting layer on top of the uh what we do traditionally even with search campaigns with the keywords is going to become more and more important as the Again, Google's of the world get so much AI driven and smarter, and it's that you you feed the data back to them. If you understand where your best performance is, they will find more clients for you of that uh, similar in in that audience. Again, I don't want to go down that far. The takeaway here <laughs> is that yeah, I can keep talking. The takeaway here is that. Um, you want to, to maintain your first party data because even if you're not using it in the sense of like feeding technology back, the time will come. You also want to, at the same time, really again, track and test and keep an eye on your performance results cross channel. That's super important to get the best results out of it. Okay, perfect. So let's take a look at messaging because I know that's something that's really important and brand messaging and consistency is absolutely a key here um, especially with you know cross-channel marketing it promotes consistent branding which makes you memorable um, it can increase revenue and like we saw in the previous slide like we see here you know it increases by 23 percent is what we're looking at it builds that awareness and builds trust and it builds a strong personality that's really easy to easily recognizable we see it with really big brands but we also really need to see it with small as well so why is brand messaging complex when it comes to cross-media advertising Katya well I think that I mean I'm going to echo something that's been said before where it's important to ensure you're running a holistic campaign and that creates lift across all channels that your brand is recognizable and uh, somebody will see that um and, and uh, interact with a brand. Well, the numbers that first number 29% better search CPL. Um, it's the cost per lead. This is this is our uh, internal um, analysis where we looked at the campaigns that run search, and then we added social campaigns. And in that period of time where social campaigns ran concurrently with search, we saw that uh, um, you just the improvement of the search cost per lead. Again, it's um, customers, they switch between devices, they go from channel to channel, and I'm sure all of us have experiences where we just went on the website, it seemed like we just talked about it, and then, <laughs> oh, we see the ad here. And it, it's like it became such a, um, you you want to be part of those conversations and if you have a brand consistency then you're not going to confuse the customer it's going to be easy to recognize even something simple as the colors right like you just you you as a again as a small business perhaps um you don't have presence everywhere but the message the you user experience the ux the colors the format like all of this create a 
digital experience for your clients that uh, they will be able to recognize your brand no matter where they come across. So it's that synergy that will drive a better outcome and we see it in numbers. Okay. And I know we have a couple examples of what consistent brand messaging looks like up here on the screen. You guys can see that even with our local IQ marketing lab, whether it be, you know, over here with a, an ad that we have on Facebook or an Instagram post, or maybe it's just um, a display ad or even a newsletter, all the branding and marketing is really consistent across the board. The call to actions are really consistent. The colors, um, the logo, what we're looking at, it's all, it all kind of makes sense. And that's kind of what the consistency of brand messaging is all about. And you really want to take a holistic approach to it, um, kind of like you see here. So, you know, what makes cross media marketing so difficult? Uh, I can't, stress it enough, but budgeting is a major pain point when it comes to cross-media marketing, right? So why do you think, Katya, it's so difficult and what can we do to adapt to it? Well, I mean, we talked about it, right? There's so many things in the, um, you, you have to, <laughs> you have to mind. It's everything between understanding your customers, your business goal, every channel in the mix and translating that goal into the channel and uh, also keeping in mind you know you, you test you analyze and you have to make sure you're super consistent there's there's a lot of things in the uh, how to effectively allocate budget across solutions i think again once you understand your goal and what each channel is good for uh, you can start there make sure your tracking and attribution is all set up make sure that it's not set up forget that you analyze it make sure you stay on top of the publisher what we call publishers google's microsoft's facebook's of the world because these places are evolving consistently and again you think your job is done it's never done it's one of those things where the budget has to be fluid don't silo it don't silo the message it has to work together to see the lift. It's like this one plus one equals three or four, or maybe sometimes even five, um, where if you have all these things that we were talking about in mind as you're thinking of the strategy, again, unfortunately, it's not a prescription one that works for all of, if I choose X, Y, and Z, that's going to benefit my business. It is all depends again, but hopefully we give you a lot of the insights, what to think about when you're setting up those campaigns and uh, optimize. It's one of the things where you just, again, you think you're done, but uh, th there's always things are moving. And uh, um, when you think you're done, it just the, the job just begins. <laughs> right, I definitely feel that. So. Let's kind of talk a little bit about our key takeaways from this section. You know, determining your goals is really important. It's the first thing that we want to do. And then identifying your channels would be second. Um, Katia talked a lot about choosing the right marketing mix that reflects your KPIs and how you can use consistent messaging across your channels. And then, of course, as both Katia and Stephanie and even Chris mentioned, testing, 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 reviewing your data and making those changes as much as possible. So let's take a look at what our approach is. And I'd like to invite Chris and Stephanie back on so that we can kind of talk through this. And once we do this, you guys, we're actually going to take questions at the very end. So if you want to start sending in your questions that you have now, we'll be sure to answer those questions at as many as possible at the very end end of the webinar here in just a few minutes. Wonderful. Yeah, and, and we do want to talk about our, our approach. You know, as, as you've heard us all speak today, uh, hopefully, uh, there, I assume there's been a spectrum of, of sort of feedback on it. For some of you, you may be saying, yeah, that's obvious. I understand that. How do I do this? How do I do that? Others of you may have been feeling like we were speaking a foreign language to you uh, with terms and things that, that just aren't, aren't comfortable. And and again, um, this solution, is, it, it will vary a little bit depending on who you are. If you're a dentist in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, a plumber in Fort Collins, Colorado with 20 locations across the Front Range, or a, a digital agency in Visalia, California that's trying to help your customers uh, uh, succeed, um, our approach is one of that is unique. Um, and, and we look at this in a few different ways. First of all, 
yes, we have data and insights from millions of leads we deliver to our customers every year. And that's our, that's our starting point. We're informed starting. We have the relationships. We have uh, strategic partnerships uh, at the highest levels and the most senior escalation points with all the key influencers in this industry. And we have a highly trained team that's going to work with you. But specifically, what does that translate to? Um, we've got a comprehensive so a solution that fits and, and solves the, some of the three main pain points we discussed today. The first is around setting the right budget. And that, again, is the type of business, your physical location, product specialties you might have, your unique business goals. We're going to take that into consideration. And we have tools that will recommend starting budgets, recommend uh, how to allocate your budget to start. Um, and the more important part, is getting into the optimization, which is the second piece on here of all of our campaigns start from the, the best starting point we know about from, again, just having run thousands and thousands of clients through this and, and driving millions and millions of leads every year. Um, and what we're doing is we're basically looking at that, looking at your business saying, here's a good starting point for you. But the most important part is not that starting point, it's what happens after that. And so all of our algorithms, all of the technology that we have is constantly learning from the signals of what it sees are working and not working. And it's adjusting to get better results for you um, nonstop. So that is working around the clock. That technology does not take holidays. It does not uh, you know, experience burnout. It, it is constantly going, constantly working for you. Um, and that is paired with great people who can explain things. If there's a concept or uh, something that you're not familiar with, they can talk you through it and they can take the time to really understand the nuances of your goals that maybe you don't even know how to express them yet, but you know it's important to you and they can help pull those out and put them into the plan. Um, like I said, our, our technology, it's patent pending. We use a lot of fun things to say, like we have data science teams, we have machine learning and artificial intelligence that's constantly getting better and we're constantly investing in it. And by you working with us, you receive the benefit of that. Um, and and it, it's not something you buy the next thing, you buy the next thing, you get those benefits as we make enhancements, improve and learn and get additional signals based on your results. And then the last thing there obviously is, is the importance of being simple, of making it so that you can understand what you're getting and showing you what's working and what's not. And that again comes back to the platform itself, giving and sharing those insights but also having expert analysis that sits with you and will walk you through and answer the questions that you have to make sure you feel comfortable and that you feel you're getting what you, you need. And so in summary, you know, whether you're working with us today, we wanna to continue to earn your business. And if you're not working with us today, we would love the opportunity to sit down with you and talk to you about how we can build this approach for you using that great technology and platform we've built. And also the great people that we have who understand the nuances of how all this works. Um, so with that, um, definitely want to open up if there are any questions uh, that, that anyone has. So please go ahead and uh, and jump those in. I'll start off maybe with with uh, one or two that I know come up a lot. And, and the first one is, what are some um, common concerns that we hear from customers as they start cross media? There, there are some common questions or concerns they have uh, getting into it, uh, maybe maybe Stephanie or Katja could sort of speak to some of those common concerns we hear. Well, it's, that's a great question. I mean, usually people are uncertain. They don't know what budget they should start with, and they don't know where, what's the right tactic mix and how much should be attributed to the to each tactic. So we can start both ways. We can work with someone budget. I have only, I don't know, $2,000. And uh, we, from our previous experience and the, all our performance data that we've been collecting, we know uh, where this budget would be better spent. And sometimes it's so non-intuitive where, as I mentioned, somebody says, oh, I really want to spend money on search which of course you could but if you're really after going after leads and the cheaper cost per lead in some categories we see that the facebook leads ads actually outperform in terms of the cost per lead so we have all this data and we can provide all this recommendations no matter whether you know your budget or not if you don't know your budget we can also uh, help you understand what are your options on uh, maybe good, better, best, or something where you want to dominate versus 
is just enough to play. And uh, um, again, not a uh, right question for everyone where even a plumber here versus a plumber there may have a very different uh, spread of budget because it all very depends, but we have plenty of data in data science modeling to get you started right. And I think that that's probably the trickiest question. What should I spend? How should I spend? And also how, what I should expect. And we have um, enough, or well, <laughs> plenty of that, I should say, to give you, to set those expectations. Chris, you're muted. Perfect. Thank you. We can yeah. um, We have a bunch okay. of questions in the chat, Chris, if you want to, um, if you see them on your screen. I do not see them, so uh, maybe you should ask them for us. Yeah, so I have a question here um, that says, what is a stable number of names or info for first party data to be reliable? Are you asking like specifically what, like how many or which ones? I think they're asking which ones. Mm -hmm. Well, generally speaking, uh, you want to have a baseline of information, which would include the person's or the user's name uh, and maybe their email address and phone number. So those are sort of the most critical, right? Um, and then, you know, obviously there's we and then and also we have, you know, tried to make it super simple. So we have like the ability to ingest. Uh, just a limited set of data but then also you know can get pretty expansive just based on what's available okay perfect um the next question is when you say marketing channels for budget do you mean specific publications or online lists for example or do you mean categories like print digital etc whoever can take this one Jen, just read that question one more time. Sure. When you say marketing channels for budget, do you mean specific publications or online listings? Or do you mean categories like print, digital? Categories. Digital? It's a category. So category. It could, within the categories, it could be specific publications that want to be targeted. But generally, we talk about the channels and the allocation. It's across. Are we talking PPC? Are we talking social advertising? Are we talking print? Are we talking email? Are we talking, you know, those, those things? Okay, perfect. How does cross media marketing reduce marketing costs? So basically, um, what happens is when you're when you're taking this cross channel approach, um, it allows several things to happen. Uh, one of the things is because uh, you're creating more presence and because people are having a number of touch points it just leads to creating more conversion and so you know given that you get more conversion on the ads that you are paying for you're going to see a reduced cost um, also um, just by making sure that you're not pigeonholing your budget in a tactic or a channel that might not be best for delivering you that lowest cost per lead um, by take, taking this kind of like more fluid approach, um, you're going to ultimately reduce your cost that way as well. Katya, do you have anything else you might want to add to that? I think it's a, it's also a very good question, but it's also like um, you uh, getting someone, it, it, it's also about targeting. So you're targeting a, a better customer and the right customer where it's not just um as i said there was there was one um slide where we had the customer in the middle with a circle so this is that cross channel marketing where you also feeding the information from let's say the ads that uh and results that converted well into other channels uh where we call infinity audiences internally but this is something where um you basically in the back end, also informing other channels, what is the right customer for you? So it's going back to the audiences in the first, some of the first party data, the data that we collect. And so then on the next side, that ad is shown not just to any customer, but the customer is who's more likely to convert. And it's 
creating that ecosystem where um, the channels uh, are going to work together versus like sporadically touching different people who are maybe or maybe not interested. So I think that that's another way where the lift is happening from using a holistic approach and trying to create, to create the right audiences for your ads, whole ecosystem there. Okay, perfect. Um, my go-to webinar is actually frozen, so I'm no longer able to see our questions. But we have, I know that we have one last one come in. So, and it says, how long do you typically wait to make changes to a digital campaign or determine that it's time to stop it? Well, this is a great it's question too. Oh, <laughs> I don't, I don't see you either, so we may start <laughs> talking over each other. Stephanie, you can go ahead and I'll add. Sorry. So, um, essentially, what I would say is it's a really a process of optimization that needs to take place. Um, so, you know, it's it's really like about sort of like constantly looking at the results and then fine tuning rather than just saying, do I need to stop it? It's really more about like you know, is this delivering results for me? How do I need to shift my budget around? It's, I would say that, you know, that cross channel approach is critical. And so it's, it's really more like constant analysis. Um, I don't know that I would say, you know, like here is a hard number of run it for so many weeks and then stop. It's more like you're going to see results get better and better over time as you continue to optimize and fine tune, not only like your creatives, your targeting, and also your budget. So, um, uh, that, that's not exactly the answer that I think you're looking for, but that's what I believe. I would just add real quickly here that um, maybe it's also um, stop, that means stop the current strategy and try a different strategy where maybe you were focused on one service and product and that turned out to be so so competitive and difficult or just not the right channels for it. So constantly again if you know what you're getting it gives you the power to rethink and have more conversations about like well maybe i'll try something else because i believe that there's like marketing is right for everyone it's just what type of marketing and uh this is the learning journey that um you know you would again um need to track, um, attribute, and analyze to understand what's giving you the results. But if something is not getting the results, maybe it's, again, it's a, just the wrong strategy about it. It's the ads, it's the keywords, it's the right focus of the right business, but the channel is actually right. So it, it's probably very situational too, but um, that would be my comment here. Perfect. Okay, and so we have time for one last question. So um, the last question that we have is, let's see. What are some effective ways to use split testing and campaign optimization? Well, I'm, I'm not gonna give like uh, the, the probably a lot of things you could do that there's uh, uh, splitting the budget, running uh, running uh, keywords on that side by side, I guess it depends to which uh, campaign you're talking about. It's, uh, it's about ad sets on social, where um, again, you may be trying different messaging in different locations. I think it's, a, it's, it's kind of like a very broad question. So, um, and you can probably like if, if you're looking for mechanics of it um there's probably you know things to read up depending again which channel you are uh looking at but um and when what and what is your goal um and how again how you think about it but the hopefully like it's it's it i think it's just hard to answer without more details and uh um, would love to give you more specifics if I knew more exactly what are you testing and what channel are you thinking. Uh, but there are there are many different techniques. It's probably not the answer that 
you would expect, you know, you were hoping for, but uh, um, again, it, it, like different publishers allow different ways to set it up. And it's really about like what you're testing, what results you're looking for. Um, yeah. so, and I would so, just add, oh. Katya, I would just add to you yeah. what you said there that um, it is, you know, that the whole philosophy though of optimization, continuous optimization that you're never done, you never set it and forget it. And I think you heard that, you know, multiple times yeah. today from Stephanie and Katya. That, that is a core principle we absolutely agree with. And, and you have to, even if you had a month of something going really good, things can change. Seasonality, there could be, you know, micro or macro events going on in your community where you are that could affect a new competitor coming into the space. All these things that you need to be watching for and constantly optimizing. And, and the idea of testing and trying, um, that is, that's what we built our, our platform around is automating that portion. So that's always part of the process. It's always testing, looking for a better result, verifying if it worked and then optimizing based on that feedback loop. So the, the principles of it were very much 100% supportive of, and that's exactly what, what uh, we, we preach when we, when we uh, do this as well. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. And Chris, if you want to just close us out today, um, that would yeah. be awesome. I know we want to thank everyone for joining us for sure, but I'll, I'll leave the floor to you. Awesome. Well, thank you. Yeah, to, to, to Jen, to Katya, and to Stephanie, uh, thank you today. And thanks to all of you for attending and joining us. Hopefully you got something good out of this. Um, as a follow-up, there'll be three things. One is you'll get a quick poll as you uh, exit today, and, and we'd love you to, to answer that. And then you should also get an email that's got both a link to the recorded uh, webinar as well as a workbook with the materials we covered today and some, some insights as well. So look forward to it. Thank you very much. And we appreciate your time today. And uh, good luck. We hope to keep talking with you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.